If you're wondering if the Fenty Beauty Skin Tint is worth your $35, then keep on watching. In today's video, I'm going to show you what the skin tint looks on my acne prone textured oily skin, dive deep into the claims of this product, and let you know whether I would recommend it or not. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Elle, and I struggle to find products and foundations that work for my acne prone textured oily skin. And when the trend of skin tints and clean girl aesthetic came out, it was the exact opposite of what I usually go for. I love the idea of lightweight makeup, but I don't really go for glowy foundations, glowy products, super moisturizing products, and I like my products to last all day. So when I was trying some of these popular skin tints on the market, a lot of them just didn't align with what I preferred for myself. So when I came across the Fenty Beauty Skin Tint, I thought it was pretty unique in comparison to many of the skin tints that have been releasing lately. On the Fenty Beauty website, it claims to be a blurring skin tint that delivers smooth, instantly blurred skin in just a few easy drops. This tinted moisturizer comes in 25 flexible shade options. Rihanna wanted to create a light coverage, easy to apply, flexible tinted moisturizer that instantly evens out your complexion and gives a flattering blurred effect. The Quick Blur Complex is meant to be hydrating and give your skin that diffused effect and overall it's supposed to smooth texture that layers well with primer and skincare and the biggest claim of all it's humidity sweat and transfer resistant and the directions of how to apply this it says shake well and apply a few drops with fingers or the full body foundation brush 110 so there are some big claims to live up to with this skin tint So in the Fenty Beauty Skin Tint, I have the shade 11, which is described as medium with neutral undertones. The shade is a bit deeper than most of my go-to foundation colors, but it matches me much better in the summer than the winter. And even though it's a bit deeper and warmer than my usual shades, I do find that it still disappears and blends seamlessly into my skin. So I would say that the claim of flexible shades is pretty accurate. And if you end up choosing a shade darker or lighter by accident, you'll most likely be able to make it work. If I were to purchase this again to wear all year round, I would instead choose the shade 10 medium with warm yellow undertones. In terms of texture, the skin tint feels like a moisturizer that dries into a more natural finish without being overly glowy or even sticky. It does sit down for the most part and as you can tell, it's not very liquidy and it's more of a cream. So if you have combination or dry skin, I think initially you would really enjoy the application of this skin tint. I'm going to use this side with a brush and apply on this side with my fingers because that's what it says that it applies best with. We're gonna see how it initially applies and I'll give you my final thoughts afterwards. So first I'm just gonna shake this up. I personally like to put it on the back of my hand, but actually for the sake of a thumbnail, I'm going to put it directly onto my face, but usually just know I put it on the back of my hand. This is the Morphe V108 brush. I'm just going to spread it out. Wow. Literally, this is the first layer and it's already covered up some of my dark spots. And that is why I feel like this is different than most skin tints. A lot of skin tints don't give this kind of coverage. Also keep in mind, I am using a dense brush. So a dense brush is just going to give you a little bit more coverage than if you were using a sponge or a stippling brush. It's also not going to be streaky with a brush like this. And just with that little bit, I've already covered half of my face. I do think I need a little bit more coverage here, so I'm going to apply on more, but overall I feel like this is pretty good coverage and a little goes a very long way. Just gonna take a dot, put it on the back of my hand, just a tiny amount. And use it to layer and cover a little bit more. And whenever it's left over, I'll just apply it on my forehead. I feel like this is a pretty good shade match for me, especially now in the summertime. 
but sometimes this looks a little dark for me so in the winter time it's a little bit more paler i would get a different shade for sure the website says that it applies well with your hands i absolutely hate using my hands for any type of product but i do understand that some people when they're using a skin tint they like to use their hands i'm just going to apply on like a little dabble and then just blend it see that was already kind of a lot um blend it onto the skin I don't know, I think I get less coverage with my hands. Like I'm feeling like because I have to thin it out and a lot of it's still left over on my fingers, I'm not feeling like I'm getting as much coverage, so I'll just apply a little bit more in areas that I want it. Yeah, I definitely prefer this brush with it, a more dense brush, just because I feel like it blends a lot easier and my hands actually makes the application a little bit uneven almost streaky so personally for me i don't really like using my hands with this but it doesn't like look bad with your hands it just takes a little bit more work so in my opinion i think it's just better off going with a dense brush especially if you want more coverage i'm going to go wipe my hands now because it's uh, can't do it you can definitely see that some dark spots are still peeking through hyperpigmentation is peeking through. So I would consider this light to medium coverage. I am probably going to add more concealer. That is what it looks like close up and applied. I'm going to go ahead and apply the rest of my makeup. This is what the foundation looks like after five hours of wear without any primer, setting sprays, or touch-ups. I coincidentally tested this on a very hot and humid day. It was about 80 to 90 degrees with on and off rain showers. So I left the house for about one to two of those hours. And as you can tell, I am very oily and would need to touch up with blotting sheets or powder. And if you look closely, you can see the skin tint clinging to patches around my nose and parts of the foundation have rubbed off from just touching my nose. I also want wanted to show a transfer test in case you tend to lean or touch your face a lot. So when I do this and I use the cotton pad to clean my fingers, you can see that there is some transfer. Now keep in mind, this could just be from setting powder or the additional products I use. Overall, the skin tint has the most longevity and least amount of transfer in comparison to most of the skin tints I've tried in the past. However, I don't feel like it lives up to all of its claims. I feel it's great for the short term and non-humid weather and has a perfect skin-like finish for no makeup makeup looks, but I would choose a regular foundation if I wanted longevity and oil control. Lastly, I just wanted to note that I didn't do an 8-hour wear test because honestly, by this point, I would just want to take off all of my makeup or just redo my entire makeup because it definitely looks worn. For my foundation rankings, I'm going to rate it on a scale of 1 to 5 based on 1. Does it do what it claims? This is really important because of course if you're spending your money on a foundation or product you are purchasing it hoping that it does what it says that it does and if it doesn't 
that's a big deal. The second one, specifically for foundation, I'm going to rank it on a scale of one to five for shade range, just because inclusivity is very important. Again, it's going to be subjective based on my perspective, so keep that in mind. And then three, based on price. Is this worth the value? And can I recommend it based on the price? In terms of if it does exactly what it claims, I would rate it a solid three, just because it does give you that blurring effect. It is buildable light to medium coverage. The quick blur complex, again, whatever that means, um, does give you that hydrating diffused effect when you apply it on the skin. The finish is very much exactly what it claims. However, I did take points off just because it claims to be humidity, sweat, and transfer resistant, which is such a big claim and I don't find it to be. I actually find it to be like most skin tints, it definitely performs a little bit better in terms of those areas, but it does still transfer, and I find that it doesn't control my oils well throughout the day, especially in the humidity and in the heat. For shade range, I actually ranked this a perfect five. Again, this is based on my perspective, so if you struggle to find a shade in the skin tint, please let me know. But again, based off of like my bias perspective, I would rank it a five because when I actually look at the range there is a very light skin tint shade and there's a very deep skin tint shade and there are 25 shades which I find for skin tints is not common um, a lot of brands tend to come out with minimal colors for skin tints or anything that's just tinted because they're supposed to be flexible and one shade is supposed to work for like a wide range of people but Fenty decided even though these are flexible shades, they would still come out with 25. In terms of price and value, you get 1.08 fluid ounces for $35. And in comparison to high-end brands, that's pretty standard. Um, there are some brands that are lower in price. So I rated this a solid four just because it's standard. $30 for an ounce of products is what I see in comparison to other high-end Sephora brands. But you know, it's still a little pricey and up there. Again, this is a subjective ranking. And overall, I would recommend this product if you have oily, acne-prone, textured skin and you're looking for something that's very lightweight but gives you some coverage if not more coverage than most skin tints especially if you're looking for something that's going to blur your skin rather than be over hydrating the only thing I feel like you would be disappointed in if you have oily skin is that it's not really going to keep your oils in control again depends on your skin but if you have combination skin I feel like this might work a little bit better for you and even drier skin I feel like this could work because it does have hydrating properties. That was my final thoughts on the Fenty Beauty Skin Tint. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more thoughtful foundation reviews. And as always, I'll catch you on the flip side.